we start with you going into prayer. Now, Father, I thank you so much for your presence here today and for these brothers and sisters and, yeah, the hearts of those that you touched to be here today. You know the busyness of our minds. You know the baggage that we bring this morning. And Lord, I just pray that you would help us put it on the side, leave it behind, and open our hearts and our minds to what you have for us today. Thank you so much for this opportunity, and I just pray that you'll bless the rest of this service. I ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning, Crossroads. Good to see you. Uh, the song we would like to start with is probably, uh, for the most of you, unknown, but it relates to some verses of uh, Revelation chapter 7, which will be read today. So when uh, uh, yeah, hopefully you uh, can connect with this song, and whenever you're ready, join us in worship. Stand with us and uh, join us in worship.
It's good that we can do this, coming together and uh, sharing life, worshiping God, sharing our stories, our joys, our sorrows. And I'm not sure that we understand it. I'm not sure that we always appreciate it, but it is good. Uh, with that in mind, I'd like uh, to give you a moment to uh, get to know somebody new, get to say hello to somebody familiar. So lots of new faces out there. Uh, if you're new, uh, just be aware that the person sitting next to you might also be new as well. So we're all members of the welcome team. So just go ahead and take a couple minutes and say hello. Now this is always a dangerous thing to do in this community because it's easy to get you started but not always easy to stop to you. So just be aware that there will be time afterwards uh, over coffee to say hello and catch up a little bit more. Um, but one of the ways I thought I would get your attention is uh, just to tell you a brief story of a conversation Lisa, my wife, and I had this morning. As I came downstairs, she said, you're not wearing that church or that shirt to church, are you? And if you've been married for any length of time, you know that that can be a very loaded uh, question. But after some very positive and structured communication that, that Miriam and Jack would both be very uh, proud of us for, I realized that she wasn't dissing the shirt, she was worried that I would be too cold because it's short sleeve and it's cold outside. And then I realized I'm in denial. I'm in denial that it's already October. Um, I like the summer, but there is something about October, the new season, the new life that comes. Um, and there's a couple things um, that come in October as well. And one of that is the Hague Expat Fair that happened yesterday. And we had a booth there that was manned by several volunteers. It was a really good turnout. We got to have some really good conversations and meet some people. Um, so it was really good just to have a presence there and to meet people that were searching for a place to come and worship and have community. The other thing that happens in October is in the future, it will be at the end of this month, and that's the campfire. And we're going to call it the community campfire because it's not just for the children, but it's for everybody. And I have some of the details. It's going to be Saturday, October 22nd, from 6 to 8 at Sanfleet, around the back. Uh, basically, that's the first day of the uh, fall break, so we're hoping that not too many people have left on holiday. Uh, we're looking for some volunteers to help with the event, so if that sounds like something you might be interested in, uh, please let Annie know. Um, and if you don't know Annie, um, you can find her contact information at the connection point table in the back. Uh, registration link for the event will be on the website, uh, in the newsletter, and on church's social media page. So. Um, those are some of the things going on, uh, just good news reports. Um, as we continue our time together of worship, uh, would you join me in a prayer for our community? Oh, Father, I, I thank you so much for your presence. I thank you for the things that you're doing in our community. I thank you for your presence with us. I pray now specifically for some of the members of our community that are struggling with health issues or finance issues or housing or employment issues, Father, all the things that can overwhelm us at times. And we know that you are the true source of comfort and strength and perspective in those situations, Father. And so we, we ask you to join us in those situations. 
And similarly, we ask that you join us in those periods of joy, of new life, of births, of successes, of just all sorts of things. Father, we, we ask that you be present in both the sad times and the joyous times. We need you for both. Give us your perspective. Give us your strength. I pray especially uh, right now for our staff. We have some health issues, and just pray for Caroline and Annie that they would feel better. You would strengthen them. Give them the rest that their bodies need. Also pray for Alan, who will be coming as our uh, new associate pastor. And I just pray that for him and his family and for the community that you will just be a good fit and you will bless him and us through him. Pray also for the gifts and offerings that we bring to you. Offerings of not only money, but also just acts of service, Father. I, I thank you for the hearts of those in our community that don't hesitate to respond to you and your spirit. Be with us as we continue this morning with our worship, with the words of Sazi, that they may be your words to us. I ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Will you stand with us as we worship? And before we, uh, uh, we start singing, I would like to read you a verse from Revelation 5. Verse 13, then I heard every creature in the heaven on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in, in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the land be praise and honor and glory and power forever. Seated on the throne 
to the end of every day. Praise Adonai. All the nations of the earth, all the angels and the saints sing praise.
seen it. Good morning, Crossroads. My <laughs> Good morning, Crossroads. Thank you. <laughs> I know now the sound is on. My name is Sassi Bene. I'm a member of the teaching team here at Crossroads. And today we are continuing our series in the School of Hope. Welcome if you are here for the very first time or if you are here for the so many of the times. Um, in this fall, here in Crossroads, we are uh, reading through the book of Revelation, and we do that in order for us to learn something about hope. And as we sing, and as we pray, and as we worship together, in all of that, we are learning something of our hope. We are learning something of what does it mean to live as hopeful um, Christians. Now, so far, what we have seen is that there is this person, John, who receives a vision, who receives a prophecy, and he needs to take that and to bring it to seven churches in his time. And those seven churches are real churches in Asia Minor, what is Turkey today. And because there are seven churches, it is not only written to them, but as we read them today, we realize that it is also written to us. And in it, we see how Jesus is worshipped in those churches, and not only there, but also in heaven. And then a vision opens up about heaven, and in heaven we see God seated on his throne and ruling over everything and everybody. And last week, Sarah uh, wonderfully has pointed out that there um, in the throne room of God, there's another figure. There's a lamb who was slain. And it is he who is the image of Jesus. It is he who is worthy to open seven, a scroll which has seven seals. So today, I want to speak about those seven seals. And we will have another two times that we're going to be speaking about a pair of seven things happening. There are seven seals there are seven trumpets that will be blown, and there are also seven cups of wrath that are being poured out. And these seven, these three, I don't know, I don't know pairs of seven, or this series of, 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 of seven, are an indication of God's judgment on earth. And we will be looking at the first of these seven uh, judgments. We're going to be looking at the seven uh, seals that are being opened. And the thing that we need to realize that the book of Revelation has been written to real people with everyday, ordinary lives and work. It was written to people much like us, who live in the dynamics of their everyday life, and mostly probably scared and persecuted for their faith. And it is written to them in order to encourage them. It is written to them as a message in order for them to be able to live hopefully in times of difficulty, in times of crisis, in times of judgment. And that's where our hope is also as the teaching team here at Crossroads, that as we read through these and as, we, as it captures our imagination, it is that we as the people of God, that we become also more hopeful. So the first seal is open, and what you see is, uh, I will be reading from the sixth seal onwards, but I need to introduce you the first, uh, the, the first five. So the first seal is open, and what we see is that there is a conquest and there is military power. It is that which, which we see maybe even today in the news, right? Whenever you see a military power threatening 
um, another nation. The second seal is open and it is a continuation of that military power and it is people fighting a war against each other. The third seal is open and what we see is that there is a great injustice, especially economic injustice where people are not able to buy their food again. Then a continuation of that in the fourth seal we see also again economic injustice, famine and that leads ultimately to death. And then there is a break from judgment and what we see is that there are the martyrs who have died for their, for, for, for their faith. The martyrs who have held on to their, to their faith at all costs. You see, the first, Christian, the first Christians, our forefathers, when they first believed in the Messiah, when first they believed in Jesus and said that Jesus Christ is our Lord, and by implication saying that the Caesar was not their Lord. That, that kind of statement always came with a certain price. It is the ultimate price that they were paying for that. And when the fifth seal is open, it is they who cry out and ask God to come and do something about this injustice. To do something about their martyrdom. To do something about the powers and the principalities and the evil that is on Earth. And then the, sir, and, and then the sixth um, seal is opened and we see a big earthquake and those who have powers, the powers and principalities, the kings, the rulers, and everybody is hiding and asking God to intervene. And listen to these words from Revelation 6 verses 15 onwards. Then the kings of the earth the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and every slave and every free man hid in caves among the rocks of the mountains. They go to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day, for the great day of their wrath has come and who can stand? And when I read this, save us or hide us from him who sits on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb. As if a lightning bolt that went through me. You see, not only people in the first century, but I think also people in the 21st century are facing indeed wars and injustice in this world. Not only people in the first century, but also in the 21st century that people are facing injustices in this world. That people are facing hunger and famine. That people are facing death in this world. People wiser than I would say that we are truly living in a time of crisis. We live in an economic crisis. That we live in a, in a natural crisis. That we live in a political crisis. And maybe the most painful one is that we live in a crisis of meaning. That many people have lost a sense of meaning in this world. You see, and the question is, how can a Christian live in this world? How can a Christian live hopefully in this world? You see, the word crisis, when understood right, it means judgment. You see, crisis means that it seems like that God is judging this world. But you see, we modern people, we can only imagine a kind of God who is much like us, only a little bit nicer than we are. You know that he would not really judge anybody because we are definitely not judgmental people. We think that somehow everything in this world is within our choice, within our reach, that we can somehow fix everything. And all we need God for is just to agree to our good plan. 
and it seems like that God is the kind of God who also has an opinion about our world. You see, God is judging the world. You see, as long as Jesus is someone who walks around in Birkenstocks and white socks, as long as Jesus is somebody who is just this domesticated version of ourselves, there's not much to be done about the injustices that this world is facing. You need a person like that is really powerless to do anything about that. And that's why the little sentence the wrath of the Lamb becomes not bad news, but good news. That it seems like that when God looks at this world, He also notices and sees the injustice that is taking place. So the wrath of the Lamb poured out over the evil over the injustice, over those who have power in this world, over the powers and the principalities. You see, that's what God is judging in this world. You see, oftentimes, judgment is used somehow against just everyday people. But I think the judgment of God is falling of that which is evil in this world. About on those powers and principalities who pretend to have power over everybody and everything. Those who look at this world and the only thing they can do at the pain and the suffering, the famine and the hunger is to laugh at it. Because they are somehow above it and untouched by it. It is to them that the wrath of the Lamb is directed. And as the sixth seal is opened and we see the wrath of the Lamb, then John gets another glimpse. And then he gets a glimpse of the people of God. He gets a glimpse of the people of God, Israel first, and then a large gathering of people from many nations from many races, with many languages, much like Crossroads here this morning. And the people of God, Israel, are counted, because everybody counts. They are counted and they are ordered, because Israel was meant to be the priesthood of God, where they were meant to be the ones whom would proclaim the name of God to all the nations of the world, and not just keep it to themselves. And they are there, Worshipping the Lamb. And on the, you could say, the second ring are people much like me and you. Coming from different nations, speaking with different accents, people from different races. And listen to this, listen to this vision. After this I looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. You see, these are people who have found a new life. These are people who have found salvation in the blood of the Lamb. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Because all those would-be saviors who promised a good life have failed. And it seems like that the only one who was able to truly save them is none other than the Lamb who was slain. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. You see, in the presence of God, angels and people and every living creature, all the questions are irrelevant. All the doubts are irrelevant. The only thing is left 
is worship. And I was trying to make this point a couple of weeks ago when I said that the worship in heaven is very much connected to the worship that we do every single Sunday. That this what we do here, even though I know that we are looking at black curtains and we are thinking, how does this song go? And it's in English. And some are singing beautifully and some are singing false, but the worship that we have here at Crossroads is an extension of that heavenly worship. The two are the same. They are connected to each other. I don't mean you guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right, the heaven is not far away when the people of God are gathered to worship. Then one of the elders asked me, these in the white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. How are Christians to live in times of crisis? You see, sometimes we think that somehow our Christian faith will exempt us from living with both of our feet on this earth. That somehow our Christian faith will kind of give us the right shortcuts to get there first. That somehow our Christian faith will exempt us from hunger, pain, and suffering. You see, it is our Christian faith. It is our hope that maintains us through pain and suffering through times of war, through hunger and pain, through unspeakable suffering. It is our Christian faith that allows us to live as truly human beings, not in desperation, but in hope that we have received from our Savior. Therefore, they are before the throne of God. And serve him day in and day or serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb and the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear, tear from their eyes. So who are those who are gathered around the throne? Who are those who are gathered to worship God? You see, the ones who are suffering. The ones who in their suffering still worship God. It is they who have found in worship their home in God himself. It is they who cannot afford to buy their next meal and next drink. It is they who have found God beyond their thirst and hunger. It is they who do not have a home in this world and the sun is beating down on them. It is they who have found a home in and with God. Who are worshipping God? The ones who are crying and cannot stop crying because of the injustices of this world. Those who are crying because they are suffering. Their loved ones are suffering in this world. It is they, it is to them that God comes. And in an act of gentleness, in an act of, of grace and mercy, they don't have to wipe their tears anymore. Because it is God who wipes away all tears. Those are who are gathered to worship God. You see, times of crisis can really scare us, and especially for us people in the West, because we have a lot to lose. 
but a time of crisis is also an opportunity. It is an opportunity to actually turn our faces, not to ourselves, not to what we have and we are about to lose, but to God himself. Because him, you can never lose. With him, you can go through everything. It is him who will wipe away all your tears. These were only six seals. Now the seven is open. And when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour.
as I pronounce the blessing. May the God of peace guard your hearts now and forevermore. Amen. Crossroads, you are blessed. Before we release you, I just want to remind you that if you have prayer uh, requests or someone you'd, if you'd like to, someone to pray with you, uh, come up here. If you have questions about anything going on uh, in the church community, there's a connection point table in the back. Also, the marriage course that's been announced, um, there's a table back there that they can answer your questions. And from what, what I understand, it will begin at the end of October. And needless to say, there's coffee in the back. Have a great week. <laughs>